find out that you could take a deep breath and relax? Uh, I don't know if taking a deep breath is maybe the right word just because, you know, we're about to jump into this, you know, very long season and trying to, you know, not let my guard down, stay, you know, remain focused so I can still execute at a high level. But uh, a lot of people in my family, a lot of my friends were definitely super excited. I felt, you know, super excited and blessed to be able to make the roster. Um, and that's kind of where it is. I'm going to see my family this weekend. Um, we have the weekend off, so it'll be the first time I saw them for a while, so I'm pretty excited. How'd they, find, how'd they tell you? How did the Bears send me? Uh, uh, Ryan texted me just telling me congratulations. Uh, be an asset to Justin, stay focused, stay ready. Um, Cause you know, the season's so long, once again, you never know what could happen. So that's kind of what my goal is to just be an asset to the team, help in any way I can, and just, you know, be ready, be ready for any situation. Are you surprised? Are you surprised at all? Uh, it, you know, I think looking back on it, thinking about the odds, um, that is pretty crazy, but it, you know, it, like I said, it was something that always made sense to me. Um, and really, I just kind of took to it as, um, you know, every single day trying to put my best foot forward, trying to give it my all, trying to execute at the highest level that I know how to. Um, and, you know, thankfully enough, that all has paid off so far. What's the biggest challenge you overcame these last four or five months? Uh, being away from my family, um, number one. And then the uh, mental aspect of the game, I think it's it's a lot different than college. You know, you're still playing football, but it's a lot more detail-oriented. Um, so I would say those two things. You've obviously handled the football aspect of this process very, very well. Coming from, respectfully, the relative anonymity of Shepherds, and now you've been maybe the most talked about back up in the country. How do you deal with that part of it in the light that's getting brighter and brighter by the minute? Um, I like to try and keep the main thing the main thing. Um, you know, continue to talk to my close family and friends, keep my circle small, uh, continue to pray every day, um, you know, and really just, you know, keep the main things the main thing, which is just being able to execute this this uh, this offense that we have and um, being able to maintain all the relationships that I care most about. What kind of yeah. advice or support has Justin given you, uh, you know, just in the last few days since this became official? Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he was great. He was one of the first ones to congratulate me just kind of in our in our early morning lift. Um, and then kind of over the course of all training camp and, uh, you know, during this preseason, he's just been a super asset to me uh, with just answering any questions that I had. And, you know, I've also been trying to return the favor with just, you know, being the eyes on the sideline, just kind of being able to look at things from a different viewpoint and, you know, try to help him as much as I can just because, you know, of how, how much he's been able to help me so far. Ian Cunningham, Ian Cunningham had said that before the Tennessee game, you guys were walking out of the tunnel together, and he said that you had an aura as like you've been here before. And obviously that's your first NFL action. Where does that confidence and that swagger, it sounded like he was referring to, where does that come from? I would say it's probably two things. I was, you know, blessed to play a lot of football in college, so I was able to, you know, I was in that situation, you know, not at necessarily at that level, but kind of in that same situation with the whole mental preparation and game planning. And then obviously, you know, you go out there and it's still 11 on 11. You know, this, the field is the same size. Um, you're still throwing and, and running the football. So um, I think if you let that get to you, um, if you look at the bright lights and the craziness that's going on, it could be it could, it could easily overwhelm you. And I know if I get overwhelmed with all the mental things that are going on, you know, as a quarterback in this league, that could, you know, easily cause the offense to start, you know, looking crazy and, you know, not not as effective. So um, I think that and then also just being able to understand that football is just something that I do. So no matter what level it is, um, it's just something I do. And then, you know, when you're off the field, it's the same, you know, everybody's the same to me. So I'm just trying to keep that mindset, keep the main thing the main thing. Um, and I feel like that has helped me have that moxie or aura that people are talking about. You said also that, that they're still trying to figure out the exact depth chart behind the Justin Fields. Do you feel like you've earned QB2? Um, I just – I just want to come in the building and work as hard as I can every single day, and then I think the rest will take care of itself. Um, so, you know, no matter what it looks like, I'll just continue to do exactly what I've been doing, which is just execute at a high level um, and be able to maintain the game plan, you know, week in and week out. With all, the football, with all the football you played in college, all the games you started, this backup thing is going to be new for you. How do you plan on approaching it and, you know, being successful as – Justin's back up. Yeah, I feel, you know, thankfully enough, we had OTAs. We've had this whole training camp in preseason. So I've already kind of had 
um, got, gotten the taste of what it will be like just with the, the reps cut down significantly from when I was starting um, in college to now. Um, and especially, you know, going through training camp and majority of the preseason as the fourth guy um, on the depth chart, I've kind of already adjusted and um, just found that it's going to be a lot of mental reps for me. Um, and it's going to be a lot of, you know, what I'm doing behind the scenes that will kind of help me stay, you know, on pace with everybody else. You touched on it being kind of crazy that an undrafted DQ quarterback got to this point. Was there a moment in this offseason program, in training camp, where it clicked, where you're like, you know what, I belong here, I can do this? Yeah, I felt like, you know, I said it always made sense to me, so I kind of already felt that I, you know, could show everybody that I did belong. Um, and it was actually cool. I just, you know, watching old Hard Knocks videos and, um, you know, I was watching some video about NBA players making the team, and they talk about, like, you know, what the statistics are for people that actually make it, but they don't take into account, you know, hey, what if this guy wakes up early and goes and works hard every day? You know, what if this guy is, you know, over six foot? You know, what if this guy runs at this speed or can't anticipate this or has a high, Q, has a high IQ? So you take all those things and you kind of put them in a pot. Um, and I felt I had a lot of those attributes in that pot. So I just knew that it was just going to be the discipline I'd be able to bring to the table every day that was going to help me get to that point. Um, you know, and I really love football. I uh, feel like I can use it as an avenue to motivate, you know, my family and, you know, other small school guys. Um, so I would say it always kind of, it always pretty much made sense that I would do it. Um, and I always felt like I could show everybody that I do belong. As, a couple more, as the current number two, how, how prepared do you feel to step in and play meaningful NFL snaps in a real, in a real game? Uh, I mean, I feel good. I feel like, you know, anytime I get the game plan, you know, whatever that game plan is, um, it will get studied. It will be understood, um, and I will put my best foot forward, um, which I kind of, which I've been trying my best to show, you know, so far through training camp in the preseason. Which hard knocks did you watch? Uh, I was watching. Um, so I was with my friend, and he didn't know how cuts worked. So I was, um, I was like, all right, perfect. We could pull this up right now. So <laughs> I pulled up the Browns, the Browns hard knocks, and I forget the guy's name, but he was undrafted uh, free agent quarterback too. Last preseason preseason game, throws a touchdown. The next day, bring him in, and they, you know, kind of document the whole thing. And you know, he his jaw dropped, and I was just like, yeah, I, I get, you know, that's kind of how it works. You got to kind of put your ego aside and just, you know, work hard every day. So um, that, yeah, that was that was one. As an extension of that, have you been? staying in a hotel for the last seven weeks. Yep. So what is the next step for you trying to just get settled now that you have an actual job here to, to stay for? Yeah, I talked to my agents yesterday. I guess it is time to start looking uh, <laughs> apartments local to Hallis Hall. Um, so, I, you know, that'll be another cool thing that, you know, I get to do. So excited to do that. I'm who is your I'm quarterback? Sorry. Who are some of your favorite quarterbacks growing up? Uh... I'm a huge fan of every single quarterback. Like, there's not one quarterback that I look at and I'm like, oh, man, I really don't like his game or anything like that. I kind of have a general respect for all the quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers, all the Aaron Rodgers got to be at the top of that list. I really kind of like the way he carries himself and I like the way that he operates on the field. What do you think about another uh, local guy getting added to the squad here? With yeah, I, Dan, Dan's a good dude. I actually met Dan at a golf event uh, a couple years ago. Um, on the golf course, and he was a good time, so I know he'll be a good addition to the locker room. So uh, looking forward to it, and obviously to have another local product is always a lot of fun. Justin Jones says he loves football, that Feeney loves football and loves beer. You can confirm that? I, I can, I can uh, confirm the latter for sure. <laughs> <laughs> confirm the latter. <laughs> Talking to Tyson, and he was talking about just the odds of an undrafted rookie out of D2 making the roster. What mm -hmm. have you thought about his performance so far and the fact that he deserves to be here? Yeah, well, his makeup's outstanding. I mean, just you can tell coming in the first day he got here, and, um, you know, he, he's worked his tail off in, in terms of understanding the offense and, and, and also defenses as well. Um, you know, I was really impressed when I got to kind of take a step back and watch an indie. Um, you can see him processing everything before the snap and, um, and all those things that, you know, you want to see from a quarterback. So it was really cool to see that, uh, this offense is, is a lot to handle. So, um, for him to be able to pick it up the way he has as a, as an undrafted rookie is really impressive. And it's been cool to kind of see him take control of some things, uh, when he's been in the game as well. Do you have a scouting report on Khalid Kareem? Yeah. Heavy hands, you know, good in the run game. Uh, tough dude and a good, lo good, good locker room, good locker room guy. So uh, excited about the addition. Another Notre Dame guy. So we're always, always welcome in Domers. 
After camp and preseason now, how do you feel about the tight end room and how it's taking shape and now getting ready for the season? Yeah, I mean, we're a really tight group, and uh, we're excited to see where, it's, where it goes. And obviously, um, three guys in the room that have now played a lot of football, and Mercedes in particular, in particular has probably played too much football. <laughs> so, uh, no, but it's good to get, you know, have all, all those minds in, in the room. And, you know, obviously our position coach, Jim Dre, does a great job with us, and he's played in the league as well. So there's just a lot of experience in the room and a lot of, you know, ideas that we can bounce off one another. Oh, with, oh, Mercedes, awesome. with Mercedes, what is the value of not only his experience, but kind of, it seems like he's got a willingness to share his wisdom and wants to kind of do it on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, very similar to kind of how, uh, you know, Jimmy was with me and you, you get a you get a guy who just wants to give all the knowledge that he can while, while he's around. So uh, really grateful for that. Obviously, Bobby's been around that uh, since he's been with him in Green Bay. And, you know, now I get to kind of feed off that as well. And um, he's seen a lot of football, seen the really the game change over the course of his career. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to take everything I can out of him this year. You have to be careful to how often you remind Mercedes that you were seven when he got drafted. <laughs> no, he, he thinks it's awesome. I mean, I told him about the whole uh, the Jersey car deal, and he loved it. So um, I'll probably have to find it somewhere and have him sign it. And so, How eager are you to, to, to play a real football game? And the fact that it's against the Packers, how aware are you, are you that if you do something great against the Packers, mm. then you'll lose for a long time? Yeah, I mean, especially where – I mean, I haven't beat them yet, um, and that's – not a good thing, obviously, and you know, I d definitely want to amend that. So I'm I'm looking forward to this week when I've had it circled since the end of last year, and you know, these these games, these divisional games are big, but in particular, you know, when we get to play Green Bay, um, it's a big deal, you know, big rivalry and all that stuff. So uh, looking forward to it, looking forward to getting to real football finally, and you know, now it starts to count. So now it's it's time to go. Cool. There's a big curiosity factor with this offense, at least from the outside. That yeah, for sure. Expectation from your side, but what what are you most eager to see? What what's the key thing? What what do you see that you think? What are you looking to that you you think will be a good indicator of, you know, this offense is ready to take that next step once you get on the field. Once yeah, the field. look, I just think it comes down to winning games. Um, I think we had a lot of opportunities last year to finish games and. I think we'll be in those same situations again this year. So it'll come down to, you know, the NFL comes down to the last quarter, usually the last couple minutes of the game, and, and how we execute in those situations is what's going to matter. So I think that that'll be a big deal for us. How well is Justin set up to be that guy? I know it's an 11-player thing, but the quarterback often gets credit for willing a team over the top. How, 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 how is he set up to do that this yeah. year? How much better is Yeah, well, I think just the amount – the, the the amount of two minute situations we've covered since the end of last year to now, um, we've gotten all these, we've logged all these reps, and you know that that that's now where we take it from the practice field to the game. So um, we've worked a ton of situations. You know, Justin has, you know, crazy more amount of command of the offense than he did compared to last year. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously he kind of he kind of takes the brunt of it, good or bad, and that's that, that's kind of the position, but. You know, we, we hope that all those all those trial runs that we've had, you know, from the beginning of OTA to now will, will kind of lead us to, to victory in the end. Cole, I know during training camp you guys are so zeroed in on your day-to-day -day grind and everything you're individually focused on. Mm -hmm. But was there a moment in camp where with Tyson, Fajin, like even inside your meeting rooms or whatever, you, you start to look at it like, oh, wait, this might just be not be the fourth guy in the depth chart. This guy might actually have a chance to stick and, and mm -hmm help us this year yeah I didn't really notice too much uh just quite frankly until I actually caught him on a one-on-one -on -one rep uh in Indianapolis and um I was just running a route I hadn't really run with him much at all so kind of indicated hey, I'm gonna throw it right at this spot and it was right on the money so like he he went he told me where to run the route how to run it and uh he was on point with it and and then you kind of saw what he did in the game as well kind of kind of really takes notice so when you see a guy execute like that in a game setting and, and live bullets like that uh it's pretty impressive so um, yeah, I think starting at that point and on, I just really take notice of it. What was that route? What was the specifics of that? Yeah, well, really just like we call it, we just call it a pow route and, um, you know, basically four step out um, to, to really you're just splitting the, the two pylons, two edges of the pylons. And, you know, he's like, hey, I'm going to throw it a little shallower than usual just because of the, the depth of where we're at. And um, he was on the money with it. Is that surprising? A, a, you know, undrafted free agent guy from a D2 school, when, when he said, this is exactly where I'm going to put it, he, he did it. Was that surprising to you at all? Uh, I'm going to say, like, surprising. It was just um, – it was cool to just kind of t see him take initiative of it, you know. Um, and, I mean, that's what quarterbacks do in general. I mean, Justin's doing that. and um, So, I guess, yeah, I mean, when you see a, a younger dude that, that comes in and kind of has that conviction on something, and uh, it, it's pretty cool to see. I was going to say, were you impressed by 
the fact that he knew to do it or that he actually put the ball where he said he was going to put the ball? Do you know uh, both, I guess. You know, I mean, you, you know, you expect these guys to make. I mean, at the end of the day, these are all professional quarterbacks, and you know, whether you're undrafted or not, to make this point, you got to have some, you know, some some good skills of, of being able to throw the football. So. Um, but yeah, you know, just as initiative, more more so, just the initiative behind it. You know what I mean, and and the confidence behind it, and and then and, and then be able to execute it. I hope you two more. Hold the pass or a question about opening with the Packers. Last time they opened with the Packers at Soldier Field, you're, you're still in college. Do you remember your anticipation for that? That was a pretty bright lights, big stage game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it's exciting. I mean, um, I mean, I think this is the game of all games. And maybe I'm biased because you know I'm a Chicago kid, but I mean, this is like the roots of the NFL and all those things. So. Um, it, it's exciting, and you know, there's a new era of, of football for you know for both both organizations going forward, and um, you know we're looking forward to take a take our step in that in that in that regard, and and you know hopefully getting the win column here to start the season. Do you remember the 2018 game at Lambeau? Yeah, I do. Yeah, that was yeah that was quite the game. <laughs> <laughs> any any like wanting to exercise those demons maybe? <laughs> hopefully we can amend those week one. Yeah. Offseason, there seemed to be a lot of questions about the defensive line. Now it seems like you guys just signed Yannick and the development of the two young D tackles. Do you feel like y'all in a much better place than even you may have thought coming in? Uh, no, I, I pretty much already knew what it was going to be. You know, once that once we got finished with that last game, I know I knew it was going to be a whole different room. I know they're going to go get <clears throat> guys who you know who are going to be here for a longer period of time. Guys who are going to come in here and, and want to win right now, like not not going to wait. They want to win right now. And that's exactly what they did. So, you know, as for, you know, it's, it's like me be not being or not, I guess, not expecting that, you know, I, I say I, I was. And uh, I think they did a good job with the guys they brought in here because all these guys want to do is compete and all these guys want to do is win, you know, and, and help each other get better. And that, that's that's uh, Yannick's, Yannick's phrase right now. Let's get better today, man. So, so yeah. What kind of message does it send to the locker room when this front office and coaching staff is willing to part with players that might have financial guarantees on their con like ties to their contracts that would maybe make it a little bit more difficult that it's production over politics, sort of? I mean, it's a production based business. I feel like, you know, either you're getting better or you're getting worse. And I feel like that's that's what it is here. You know, that we're we're on an upwards trajectory right now. And we're doing the best we can, you know, to get everybody in who's who's coming to help us win. And cause that's the most important part right now of being the bear. You know, we want to win right now. So that's that's, I mean, that's the show and improve right now. So, Justin, defensively, you guys have come a long way since the spring in terms of mixing new guys, and starting to grow and develop. What what gives you the most confidence as you go into week one about what this defense can become? Uh, just just the swagger. You know, when we take the field, it's, it's, it just feels different. You know, guys, guys aren't afraid. You know, to call call stuff out. You know, the, the confidence of this defense right now is, is through the roof, and it's only because you know we know we got guys who really study the playbook. We know who got we got guys who really watch film. We got guys who are aren't afraid to be vocal, even if we're wrong. It's a hundred miles an hour. You know, and you can feel that. You know, so as long as we're all on the same page, we never wrong. And that's 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 what it is, and you know it's it's, it's contagious. You, know, you got one guy who's barking, barking, barking. Another guy starts barking. Another guy starts barking. Now the whole defense is chirping. You know what I'm saying? And and everybody's playing fast. So you know that I think we got the, we got those guys right now. So you know it's cool to see. The biggest thing right now is just getting everybody healthy and getting everybody on the field. Cause when we're all healthy on the field, man, it's scary, man. Feeling you said yesterday, that it's tremendous, <clears throat> kind of the driving force of having that defensive huddle before every period. A little thing, but what does that mean when you guys? Kind of collectively come and, and, and start to develop that. You know, uh, he had, he had, he had brought that up to me uh, before we even started doing it. Like, hey, you know, what you think about this, man? And I was like, well, he had told me. He said the purpose of it is it's not to is to get guys going, and really not for the defense, more so for the offense. You know, just to show them that we coming out here, and we ready, we coming here ready to play. We run into the ball, we set, you know, we know our stuff, and we're, we're getting it done. So I'm I'm with that. You know what I'm saying? In any type of way we can put fear into the offense heart, I'm with that. So so yeah. Justin, what's the most important thing that Alan Williams stresses to you guys? Uh, the his principle, and you know he, he stands by that this defense only works with the his principle. Like without it, this defense is nothing. So you know, hustle, run to the ball, getting there with intensity, which is the eye. You know, getting there with a bad attitude. You know, takeaways, the most important part. You know, takeaways, win games, and being smart, smart players. You know, having guys who know the game, and you know, really, really know football. Because at the end of the day. The biggest driving force behind a playmaker is knowing what to do and, and knowing about knowing the, how you fit into the game. So, Justin, how immersed are you in the Packers? Say it again. How immersed are you in the Packers? I'm just ready to play, man.
<laughs> I'm just ready to play. That's that's all I can say on that one. So. Brian Post was just saying that even he sometimes keeps track of the trade rumors and sometimes he feels the need to address them. Did you hear about Chris Jones potentially being somebody the Bears were interested in? And did, did you did you feel some type of way about it? No, nah, I mean you know I'm, it's, it's a business. You know it's a production based business. At the end of the day, you know. However, however, anything shakes out, you know, I put my best foot forward. You know, I, I work hard every day, and I come here to make plays. So, however that looks, you know, that's just what it is. So. This, this is fairly off topic, but um, uh, the White Sox had an incident uh, last Friday night where there was a gun in the outfield, and it went off and hit two people. As an athlete, have you ever worried about your safety inside <clears> the stadium? And if you heard that story, what do you think? I have heard that story before, and honestly, I, I got complete faith in, you know, our, our operation here. With the Bears, like you know, with the stadium and everything at uh, Soldier Field, and just you know, keeping keeping stuff like that from happening. So the fact that a gun even got in there in the first place, you have to look at that, you know, that that operation over there and see where that fell, where, where that happened, how, how that fell short. Because at that point, you're not only failing the the the, the fans, you're failing the players too. Because people, fans, people, parents are in there, people's wives and daughters and kids are there too. So like, what, what if that would have been one of the one you know one of the players' kids or one of the one of the, their wives or just in general, like people. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it's just the bad, it's just the bad thing to happen. So you got to put that on the operation, the whole operation as a whole. So, yeah. Having gone through so what why you, do you think more. that the hits principle is easy for guys to buy into? Like there's so many new faces on defense, and it feels like everybody instantly is on the same page. Uh, you know, when you run to the ball, good things happen, and then that's like a phrase that stands the test of time. You know, it's, it's a lot of times where you see a guy, you know, throughout history in football, a guy's run to the end zone, he starts celebrating, right? Puts the ball out right before he gets in to fumble, right? Defense recovers it. Not only is that a big play in the game, but it's momentum, you know, for the for the for our team going in. So plays like that, you see guys coming across the field, knocking the ball out. You see guys coming across the field, intercepting the ball. Uh, guys, you know, when the quarterback escapes the pocket and he's extending the play, guys running them down, like all that stuff matters, you know, because those, those are the big plays of football. The guy, you know, the effort ones, the one that takes second, third, fourth, fifth, even sixth effort, you know. And even on your gas, you know, you don't feel as tired because those big plays, you know, impacted the team in, in a positive way. So, listen, Matt Lewis is a defensive guy, but he's obviously he's really uh, into being a head coach and being coach of the whole team. What do you think is Eberflus's just strongest suit, just as as a as a defensive player, as any player, as a, as a player on this team? Uh, being a players' coach, allowing the players to voice their opinions, you know, their likes, their dislikes, you know, how, how we can improve not only you know, the operation of, like, game day and the facility and stuff like that, but also how we can improve this defense. How can we improve as a team? You know, how can we get guys closer, you know, than what we already are, you know, as a team? You know, what, even, like, what play, like what, what what fronts do we like to run? Like, you know, what blitzes we like? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you feel about certain – like, he gives the players, like, a lot of a lot of opportunities to voice their opinions, which I feel like does wonders because, you know, when you got guys who really, really want to win, like, we're not trying to cheat the system. We're just trying to make it more efficient. So, have you taken it, have you taken it upon yourself to kind of maybe uh, make sure that nobody lapses in practice after what happened last year, or is that not necessary because of what you guys have now? Uh, you know, we got a lot of leaders in our team right now, a lot of leaders, and I feel like they do a good job. You know, everybody has different leadership styles, so I feel like you know when a guy is lagging in practice, you're not gonna really see anybody just get on him right then and there, you know, because. As a leader, you kind of have to know how your teammates respond to certain, you know, certain things. Like if you're gonna yell at them in front of everybody, a lot of guys don't respond well to that, you know. So you kind of have to wait, get it to the sideline. Hey, bro, you know, it seemed like you kind of let up on that play. You know, let's, let's finish through. All right, bro, I got you. You know, something like that, or something as simple as, hey, you know, your, your eyes went in the right place right there, man. You know, you you better than that. Yeah, I got you. And sometimes so you even have to check a leader. You know what I'm saying? Somebody might come to me and be like, hey, Jay, like you. Your footwork wasn't there. Yeah, I, I felt that, man. I felt that. Yeah, you, I got you, but I appreciate that. You know, and that can come from anybody. But that just tells you how close our team is for allowing anybody to come up to you and tell you, like, hey, you're not being your best today. You know, because as a team, as brothers, you know, you need that. You need somebody who's gonna come out there and tell you when you're not doing, you're not doing your, you're not be, being your best. Because at the end of the day, we want the best for each other. So, going back to your last answer, is there anything that you voiced about like your own play that you think, you know? Maybe changes that will allow you to be a better player, more productive player this season. Uh, one thing I spoke about with, with the last game, it was a play when I went, uh, I stunned it inside and I came free, and the running back had came, he had jump cut to my right side, and I tried to make an arm tackle and swung and rolled off of it, 
that's a play I know I can make a hundred times, you know? So thinking about that play right there, I thought about it all weekend, about things that I can do to, to just to make sure that I'm making that play because that's something that I've done hundreds and hundreds of times. So something as simple as that, being being closer to the tackle, putting my body on him so that he'll actually get down and me not rolling off is a simple fix. So in practice today, we made sure we worked the drill just for that because I know I can make that play a hundred times. And you know, we're all human. It's not gonna be perfect, but you strive to be perfect. You do it, you do it, you do it till you can't get it wrong. You don't do it till you get it right, you do it till you can't get it wrong. So Justin, how does Justin look different in the pocket this year? Uh he looks he looks real confident in the pocket, I'll say. You know, I think what I have noticed is that this camp, you know, he hasn't really been using his legs as much as he had to last year. And that's that's a big thing for our offense because, you know, he has a lot of deep threats, you know, with DJ and Darnell and Chase, you know, EQ, you know, uh, Valus, you know, but those guys, like, we got some speed demons. We got guys who can make guys miss. We got guys who can beat a double team. We got guys who's running through zones and get open in any, any kind of play. I know y'all seen DJ Moore's play, you know, the yards at the catch. Crazy, you know what I'm saying? So... I think I think he has some guys where you know he he really feels like they're gonna go out there. He can throw it to them at, at the two, and they're gonna go out there and make a play. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna go out there and make a play, and that's when you have when you have that. I feel like as a quarterback, you know, your confidence goes through the roof. Thanks, Josh. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.